if when you think of veggie burgers, you think of cardboard, sawdust type, <laughs> disgusting pucks that go on a bun, then I swear you have never had veggie burgers like this before. There are two different types of veggie burgers. The one that's supposed to taste like meat, like your Impossible and your Beyond Burgers, and then there's your veg veggie burgers, the ones that taste like a garden. What's this one? This is a veg veggie. I like these ones. It's not meant to taste like meat. So if someone makes this recipe and they're like, ew, it doesn't taste anything like a, like a burger. It's not meant to, it's meant to taste like a veggie burger. I got ya. I like a veg veg burger for lunch. You gotta be careful when you're saying veg veg. <laughs> <laughs> I just got out. I was like, what? Especially the way you talk, a veg veg? Okay, okay. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, as the name suggests, these are called greeny tahini burgers. So are they blue? Or are they pink? I think we got that they're gonna be greeny. So they are gonna be very, very greeny. So you could you could substitute in different green vegetables for this, but we're using, and you'll notice I'm using frozen veg which I love. Economical. Very economical. Always have on hand, usually. We're using peas, edamame, and frozen kale. Ooh. I know. High protein. Yes, that's where the protein is coming from for these burgers. They're not just green veg and you're not, you're gonna be unsatisfied. Okay, so this is- Why do you have this? Yeah, so people are like, why are we putting in this weird product into these- Who's these... this me? Who's looking at this and being like, mm. What is, why is this going into a burger? Okay, so all Metamucil <laughs> is. So I ran out of psyllium husk powder. That's all Metamucil is. Metamucil okay. is 100% psyllium husk powder. So it's one of those weird things that in a supermarket, there are things that are sold under different names. If you look at the label, unless you're getting like the orange flavored one, which you know, this is the natural this. one, regular psyllium husk powder is what we're looking for Interesting. here. Interesting. Then we're gonna mix it with tahini for the greeny tahini burgers. And what More this- More protein more protein and healthy fat. And what's this, what this is gonna do is combine to form a thick gel in replace of eggs for the burger. So this is what's gonna hold our burger together. And like I said, if you don't have Metamucil, just look for psyllium husk powder online. I just wanted to show you that it's the exact same thing. And you can get Metamucil in most grocery stores. Exactly, so if you don't wanna find is it online. Is it cheaper? I have like psyllium husk, I feel like that like sounds like yes. coin. I haven't price compared, but it very well could be cheaper. So if you're a smart consumer, why not just, and a lot of people have that on hand in their homes anyway. Um, so just go ahead and use that. So for the vegetables, what I like to do is give them a quick blanch in some salted water ahead of time. And if you don't take this step, this is really what's gonna, just cook them a tiny bit, but then give them that nice bright green color. I love that look. Yes. But they they even look bright there though too, but you don't wanna do frozen, like no. mixing in frozen. No. You just gotta, just two minutes, just to just to take the- Oh, I thought it was two minutes. I thought that was- Peace. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. no, that was two minutes. <laughs> And then when they're done, I after, thought you were just feeling. I was just like green it. tahini. <laughs> and then when they're done, you have to take the extra step and put them in an ice bath. I hate doing that because Go get it, brown. It uses up a bowl, but that's what's going to retain that nice green color. Mm -hmm. Look at that, greeny tahini baby. Yep. And it doesn't look like there's a lot in there right now. You might be like, oh, how is this going to end up being a lot? But with all the in other ingredients, it ends up being. You, it ends up making four large burgers, which is what I like, or you can make eight smaller ones. It, like sliders. Yeah, sliders or thinner. Okay. It really depends on what you're looking for here. One of the things I love about using a food processor is you don't, it does all the chopping for you. So you're just getting it in there. You say I'm an infomercial. He's like, you don't even have to chop. But it's true. I don't know what I did before I had a food processor, especially for burgers. Totally, for burger, for, for veg burgers like this, you're not gonna be making a beef burger in there, but no. for veg burgers like this, for sure. Yeah, so then we just add all the ingredients into the food processor. So we've got some capers here. Ooh. That's what's gonna give us uh, like a new mommy, a lot of layers of different flavor here. So that's gonna provide a little bit of a pickly edge. Then we've got some hot peppers that we're adding. This is nutritional yeast. You guys know I've been I've talked about nutritional yeast before. It adds like a savory, again, umami flavor. A lot of flavorful ingredients going in here and nutritious. So like yes. that's not, sometimes like different burgers can be lacking in nutrients. Like mm -hmm. when it comes to like, I'm talking about the veg burgers. Yes, of course. They're just like, like I don't want to eat. They're like rice sometimes. Like it's just like, that's not nutritious. And I don't want to eat like peas on a bun. That's no. not nutritionally sound. So now we're adding in some quinoa flour. This is gonna act as a binder and quinoa is a complete protein. So again, another protein source. And this is some arrowroot flour. So this is also a gluten-free recipe. 
So if you have someone coming to your house that is vegan and gluten free, I know that's sometimes tricky for people to think of what to make. Now to me, these are seeming like, I think you're missing a word on the title here. I feel like they could be called greeny tahini cheapy birds, okay? Because these, <laughs> these are cheapies. These are cheapies. These are totally, like, a lot of these ingredients, they're expensive to purchase initially, like the arrowroot flour and things like that. But if you make this yourself, like, these are probably for, like, pennies each. Yes, absolutely. And, like, cheapies. They are. That doesn't rhyme, but I'm, I'm going to give it to you. It slightly does. It slightly <laughs> does. <laughs> And then I just added in some green onion and some fresh parsley, some lemon zest. Again, when you're making a vegan burger, you have to add a lot mm -hmm. of elements of flavor. Otherwise, it's not gonna taste good. Especially salt. Yes. People under salt all the time. The difference between home chefs and professional chefs, a lot of it comes down to salt. Mm -hmm. And that's why I added some salt and tamari. Tamari, again, going with the umami thing. So in the food processor, don't take it down to hummus territory. You don't want to blend it all the way down. You want to have some texture to these burgers. So if, if, you, if that's your thing and you're like, I like them perfectly smooth, fine. But I like to just pulse it together, use the pulse function and get it broken down, but still, you can see some chunks in there still. I agree with that. There's going to be like some chew to it still. Yeah, some bits. You want to see some, some bits. And right now, it's, you might be thinking it's looking a little bit mushy. So if you're no, like, I'm thinking that mm. looks like that's gonna hold together, and it looks like a perfect consistency. Okay, so also color out of this world, greeny. Baby. I love that color. Me too. Green makes my heart sing. Okay. So it right now it, they are a bit soft. If you are taking them and you're gonna try to form that into a patty, it's too soft yet. You have to put them in the fridge and let them rest for a while. Let that psyllium husk do its job, and it's gonna gel. It's gonna gel with all those other ingredients. It's gonna absorb the quinoa flour and the arrowroot flour, and it's gonna thicken and it's gonna harden up it's like if you were to make cookies and then sometimes a recipe will say you have to let it sit in the fridge for them to firm up or Same thing. doughs a lot of pie doughs you're not just gonna just go at that you gotta let it sit exactly so 20 minutes later we're we're into forming the patties See, look at that that's forming together perfectly yes that... i'm impressed with that because when you first see peas edamame kale you're like how is that all gonna hold together that's holding together magically. That's thanks to the psyllium husk Ooh, and the tahini. I like the sesame seeds on here. Yes, now I wanted to do a sesame seed crust because that gives it them incredible flavor, incredible texture, and again, a little bit more nutrition as well. Oh my goodness, and also the look of that. Yes, it's beautiful. And because tahini is made of ground sesame, it's just the same flavor, very similar flavors. You did those by hand. Yes. Buddy, those look perfect. They look so uniform. Thank you. It looks like you put those in a, in a like professional burger press. Really? Yes. Thanks, honey. <gasps> you broke it out! So this is my first time using the griddle attachment for the Ninja Wood Fire. Can you guys tell how excited I was? Oh, look at that face. I was a like- A lot of teeth in that smile. A <laughs> lot of teeth in that smile. In the best way possible. <laughs> I was like, here we go. Okay, so I'm still in the grill function though for, the, um, for this attachment. I didn't want wood flare flavor to these. You could add it if you wanted to. I just wasn't in the mood. Hit start, let it do its preheat thing. And I'm using avocado oil on the bottom because avocado oil is high heat. It's gonna toast those sesame and give us a nice crust on the outside. However, though, that looks like a non-stick surface. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you need that. No. But oil is gonna help with the browning. Yes. And it's going to give it some light flavor. Absolutely. Look at how perfect those look. This is a perfect way to break in the, the griddle. And look at how, how easy they're holding together. You're, yes. not, you're not worried about them crumbling I can't, apart. I'm like imp so impressed by that. That's the problem with some homemade veggie burgers is, the, is getting, getting the texture right. Ooh. And as they start to cook, the green is even more vibrant. You can see the green throughout. Now that griddle looks like it would be perfect for pancakes, smash burgers, which so did you give these a smash? No. So these are just straight up a griddle burk. Yes, look at that color. Okay, that looks magnificent. And in only five or six minutes. Look at how to... easy this is flipping. Yes, and so it is very like-, like it, Look, it, it's like sliding around like an ice rink. It reminded me of like an air hockey table. It was very, very like <laughs> loosey <Only> goosey. Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> loosey goosey, like they were not sticking by any means. You, you wouldn't need the oil. 
but I chose to use it more for flavor and for crunching of those sesame seeds. But you gotta keep your eye on them because they can brown very, very quickly. But there's nothing in here that you need to technically really cook anyway. It's not like no. you're cooking off egg or you're cooking off meat. No, but as they cook, they do tend to get firmer. Now watch this. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> It was such a windy day. I Classic, know. but why at that exact moment? I was like, hello. It's like Mother Nature just went. <laughs> They're like, never mind, you're trying to get off your burgers, whatever. So I retrieved my aluminum foil. Thankfully, it didn't go far. We're and back you don't in need business. The aluminum foil, but it does make the cleanup easier. That's why you're, you're, you're using it here. You could have just gone straight up on the cookie sheet, yes. but. I like an easier cleanup. Me too. I wanted these to be on the thicker side, but you could make them thinner. And then here's how I like to serve them. I've got a nice fluffy bun, just some straight up mayonnaise on top of there. Look at that big burg, fits the, fits Ooh, the bun. Ooh, some cuke on there. Some cuke. I want, this is just how some I nice wanted to make crisp mine. crisp cuke, were those, were those salted or anything? No. Just straight up? It's just some nice red onion. Like the color. Yeah, and some broccoli sprouts because I, had to, I happen to have them. More Do we mayonnaise. Have any kind of sauce. On, oh, more mayo on the top. More mayo on the top. You could use a spicy mayo if you wanted to. That would be really good. Ooh. But look at how beautiful that is. I had to cram this down. Did you Guy Fieri it? I went, look, watch. Did you just, oh, yeah, I went she, right in. Uh, Guy Fieri, watch out. Okay, <laughs> she's coming for you. That was a big bite if I ever saw one. I had to. It was so good. Uh, oh, yeah. The smell, oh, yeah. Of, the smell of the sesame <laughs> seeds and the texture of that burger was on point. And you went heavy on the mayo there, and mm -hmm. I'm into it. A I bird, had a to. Good, a good bird needs a lot of mayo. Yes, absolutely. So, like I said, if you're in the mood for a burger that is on the side of tasting like, it's like an imitation meat type of burger, don't make these because you're gonna be disappointed. It doesn't taste like meat and I'm not gonna tell you it does. I have to make them for you, honey. They were fin not. Yeah, you made four. And I ate did all you, four. Did you really? <laughs> of course. Thanks. I had, I had two on a bun, then I had the other two, I think I had one in a wrap and one on a salad. <gasps> Ooh. Multi-purpose. Loving it. <laughs>